Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkylieburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top of the line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com. All right, let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. Toxins, water, air, food we eat, organic. This world of toxicity is quite vast. And if you've been paying attention to any of my episodes previously, you will understand that I do not harp on nutrition and food because it's only one piece of our health puzzle. I have found, and I believe, that the water we drink and the air we breathe are more important than the food we eat, and I'm about to convince you. At least try to. I am definitely no, I'm not the type of person who argue or even debate. But let's take a look at toxicity. And let's think about how much air do we really breathe? You might be thinking the obvious things, like if you live next to a smokehouse or I don't even know what they're called, but I can picture the one that's in Utah, just north of Salt Lake. And it's literally pumping junk into the air all the time, this massive, massive plant of some sort. There are energy fields. If you live by power lines, it can affect your health. And the water we drink is toxic. What's the best way around it? Well, before we jump into the nitty gritty, let me just show you what some research has said. A study found 55 new chemicals in people. Scientists at UC San Francisco have detected 109 chemicals in a study of pregnant women, including 55 chemicals never before reported in people. 42 of these mysterious chemicals are sources and uses unknown. These chemicals have probably been in people for quite some time, but our technology is now helping us to identify more of them said the article publisher. Wildfires and toxicity. Burning trees and bushes give off solvents like benzene, formaldehyde, toluene, and xylene. Harmful gases like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, ozone, and sulfur dioxide, and respiratory irritants like acrolein. Wood smoke also contains arsenic, mercury, and PAH, known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, all known carcinogens and DNA damaging toxins. What about the famous word glyphosate? Glyphosate spraying on forests. Every year, British Columbia sprays about 10,000 hectares hectares of forest with glyphosate as part of its reforestation program. Here's the problem with this. According to Chris Edge, a research scientist with the Atlantic Wing of the Canadian Forest Service, about 30% of clear cuts are sprayed with glyphosate 
and just a third of those require additional spraying. The term organic means that there has been no three years of spraying. So in the duration of the last previous three years, organic means that there has not been any spraying going on it. Google says, however, that the rapid rate in which most soils, the half-life is estimated between seven and 60 days, when studies have indicated that the presence of glyphosate in the soil can enhance microbial activity, some studies have also shown toxic effects of, micro, of glyphosate on soil microorganisms. What is the real half-life of glyphosate? Meaning how long does it actually stay in the soil once it has been sprayed? A half-life of glyphosate is anywhere between 119 and 958 days in the soil. In water, glyphosate has a long persistence in the sedimentation within water. So here's what it's been shown in specific locations around the world. In Finland, 249 days in agriculture soils is where glyphosate can still be found. Between 259 and 296 days, inside the Finnish forests. In Swedish, in, Sw in Sweden, there they found glyphosate in the soil between one and three years. That's how long it lasted. Canadian forest sites found it on 335 days, so almost a year. And also 360 days, so again, almost a year. Two Canadian studies found glyphosate persisted 12 to 60 days in pond water following direct application. To be organic, it requires a three year of chemical free soil, but glyphosate is in the soil for over three years. You can find more at beyondpesticides.org. <sighs> Going into more of the half-life about glyphosate, meaning how long does glyphosate actually survive in soil? It has been estimated for 22 years in light soil and up to 30 years in heavy soil. So just because it says organic doesn't mean it's chemical free, it just means less because glyphosate hangs out in the soil for up to 30 years. Toxicity creates deficiencies within the body. Correction of the toxicity can eliminate the need for nutritional supplements 95% of the time. However, we live in a toxic world. There's no denying it. There's no escaping it. There's only minimizing it. So again, look at beyondpesticides.org and you can find a whole bunch of pesticides linked to specific health scarce. And here we are to figure out what are the best ways to help minimize our exposure to toxins. And I want to focus on two key places, the air we breathe and the water we drink. First, water. Um, let me flip over into my notes here. And let's talk about what is actually found, what can be found in water. Is your water keeping you sick? Is it making you sick? The most important aspect of water is that it is chemical free, pure H2O. I filter my water. Are you wasting your time? Filtering water can lead to a false sense of security. Filtering water does not mean that it is pure. If you are not drinking distilled water, you are skipping over a big missing piece of your health, says Dr. J and Dr. Todd Watts of Cellcor. 
These are their thoughts. So they have owned just about every filtration system under the sun. I actually just bought myself a water filtration system and I am super stoked about it. It came from Aqua True, which I'm just excited about because clean water is going to help minimize toxin impact and my own family's health. I am much more apt to have clean water and cleaner air than I am to pay for organic foods. It's just your choice. It's your preference. Um, like I said, I believe the air we breathe and the, and the water we drink it has a bigger impact on the food we eat. The food we eat is very important because it's going to, as we're about to discuss, replenish the minerals that you have removed from the water due to the filtration and what I highly recommend doing to your water. And if you're curious about this water filtration system, you can learn more on my supplement store at drkylieburn.com slash supplements. There'll be more information about Aqua True, how you can order yours, and also my air purifiers. About 7.2 million Americans get sick every year from diseases spread through water, says the CDC. Now, those are diseases like H. pylori, C. diff, Campylobacter, E. coli, those nasty things that are floating inside our water. That's what they're talking about. What we're talking about, and what I'm talking about here today, is how our chronic illnesses impact, are impacted by the water we're drinking and the air we're breathing. This is how bad the water is. Throughout 120 locations randomly tested in the United States, over 118 of them had higher arsenic than the CDC recommends. And that's the CDC, which means it's gotta be really high. We all know they're not about keeping us healthy. They're about maintaining us being sick. And if there are 118 out of 120 who have higher heavy metals of arsenic specifically found inside that water, think about how much we truly are getting. <sighs> what about fluoride? Synthetic industrial fluoride compounds lack calcium and are listed as, listed as toxic substances underneath the Merck index. Calcium fluoride is found in natural minerals, minerals and is not labeled as a toxic compound. The fluoride compounds sodium fluoride and fluorosilic acid are added into municipal water for human ingestion purposes. They are synthesized artificially by industrial reactions and have been used as rodent, rodent, rodenticides, insecticides, and other things I can't even pronounce. <laughs> With acute oral lethal doses in experimental animals compared to arsenic and lead. So what we are supposedly adding into our water for, quote, health is more toxic than arsenic and lead. Mm -hmm. Fluoride is not a normal constituent of the mammalian bloodstream, says the Merck Manual for Healthcare Professionals. It has no nutritive value or, psych or physiologic function, but has been believed by some to be useful for teeth based on initial correlation with natural calcium fluoride in drinking water. Be careful about the type of fluoride. Is it natural? Is it artificial? And what additional compounds have they combined with it. Fluorosilic acid is one of the main products used in water fluoridation. As a byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry, it may contain contaminants that are harmful to human health, says a study done in Brazil. Fluorine almost can be found almost everywhere near phosphate rock. It also contains toxic elements like aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, lead, 
as well as uranium, a radioactive element. I know this goes deep, and this is all coming from the research. We can get into plastics. We can get into radium. In fact, radium was found in all 50 states. 158 public water systems in 27 states reported radium in, in amounts that exceeded the federal legal limit. Drinking water for more than 170 million Americans contains radioactive elements at levels that may increase the risk of cancer. Drinking water in which more than 170 million Americans drink have a radium in it, which can improve, greatly improve your risk for cancer. Lead damages the bone and is associated with osteoporosis. Texas, here's a statistic for you. 80% of Texas has excessive radium. Texas has a disproportionate amount of radium contamination. A study done, and you can see the findings at ewg.org, identified over 3,500 different public utilities that contained excessive radium contamination. Those services provided water to a staggering 22 million people, or 80% of the population of Texas. The radium belt, is what they call it, has high levels of radium specifically, but inside this radium belt, you can also find high Lyme disease within people. <clears throat> The radioactive element radium is found in the deep aquifer in Wisconsin's arc-shaped radium belt. As public water systems drill deeper to meet growing water demands, more radium is turning up into the water. I know my husband and I just got some property in, in Idaho where we have to dig a well water system. It's in this tiny, tiny little remote town that doesn't even have a stoplight or a gas station or anything. And we're super excited about it because I love, we love small towns, but we have to drill our own water well. And I told them that we're going to have to have a in-house filtration system um, because the soil contains really high levels of arsenic in the area and who knows what else. Plus, when you're having to dig deeper and deeper, I think the, the guess was around 300 feet is what they were going to have to dig to access water at our property. Um, definitely incorporating a home filtration system when, when and if we actually build a house on it. But <clears throat> so if you're whatever your source of water is, just know that it is toxic. And one of the ways I'm going to get my family healthier in 2022 is to filter the air we breathe and the water we drink. And those are my Christmas presents. I'm super soaked about it. Okay. You can go to ewg.org and discover more all about water and toxins and air and toxins. And we're going to get into more of this on the next episode, in which I meet with a toxic expert, an environmental toxic expert. Um, but just a little bit of statistics about our water, and it's not, not fun. So then you have to ask yourself, well, what is the best way to filter our water? Is it distilled? Is it filtration? And if so, what type of filtration? I mean, the arguments against all sorts of water can stand. It's just a matter of what is right for you. What do you find the best inside your body? And then being sure if you are doing something like distilled water to replenish everything like minerals that will be missing. Long-term side effects of distilled water drinks or drinkers have also reported that their hair thins out or may, may even start to fall out <clears throat> as a sign of a mineral deficiency. In fact, minerals, M-I-N, is a supplement I like to take, especially postpartum, for hair regrowth, but I recommend it for any type of hair failing in any way. 
um, thinning out, falling out, all that stuff. Minerals is great. M-I-N is the supplement, min. Consumption of distilled water can cause dehydration and lead to health issues resulting from the lack of nutrients that are essential to our health. These are arguments against distilled water. Can you drink distilled water? Is it safe? Well, let's discover what is right about distilled water. Dr. Charles Mayo, co-founder of, quote, the Mayo Clinic, has said water hardness is the underlying cause of many, if not all, of the diseases resulting from poisons in the intestinal tract. These hard minerals pass from the intestinal walls and get into the lymphatic system, which delivers all of its products to the blood, which in turn distributes to all parts of the body. This is the cause of much human disease. So water distillation gets everything out except volatile organic compounds. There is a company called My Pure Water that can help with this. I liked the Aqua True one. So that's the one I chose for my family. Volatile organic compounds are compounds that we have like air fresheners, gasoline, glue, ink, magic markers and dry erase pens, solvents. Uh, if you ever asked your kids or if your kids have like more health concerns at school, one, because buildings are probably old, but two, magic markers and dry erase pens get into the air. And then in, in additionally, we can think about gas stoves and the fumes being released from gas stoves. One of the most simple things you can do in, in your own house, if you wanna do something simple and free, open up the windows and get some circulation and get some airflow moving around. If you are someone who feels better on vacation, you're sick at home, your problem is at home. There's the air you're breathing and your food, the, the air you're breathing and the water you're drinking can easily impact your health. So pay attention. If you feel better on the beach on vacation or in the mountains on vacation or at an Airbnb or heaven forbid you feel terrible at an Airbnb, could be mold, air, or even water related. Distillation separates the water, the H2O from the chemicals. Filters pull it out and deteriorate over time. So reverse osmosis is the most effective. However, they can be very expensive. So look for distillers. You can even just have like a, a counter thing. That's what mine is, is a counter water purification system. And then add in your minerals from your diet or from supplementation. How much water should we drink? Half your body weight in ounces per day. So if I weigh 135 pounds, I should be drinking around 60 ounces, 65 ounces, 70 ounces per of water per day at a minimum. And let's see, this is 40, 33 ounces. So I should try, probably be drinking two and a half. I get like one and a half, but I don't drink anything else. I'm not drinking any dehydrating agents either. No caffeine, no coffee, no soda pop, no whatever it is. It's just water at my house. And like I said, you might want to consider some type of house filtration system for like a shower or even a whole house like we will be getting in our new house whenever that happens for years to come. But in summary, distilled water is the purest water to drink. It is consistent on purification. Get a water, water distiller to avoid plastic. All filters eventually deteriorate. Inorganic materials in water are not unhealthy. And then to replenish the minerals that you're getting removed from the distilled water, as well as all the bad stuff, eat minerals in your food and supplement with MIN, or if you're looking into cell core products, Mito ATP is a good one, as well as CT minerals. That's the jiffy about water. 
Now, the air we breathe, unfortunately, is just as toxic because we are constantly breeding mold. Whether you've been ex exposed to black mold or not, it doesn't matter because mold is in our air. Most of us can just handle it and remove it safely. Some people, however, cannot. And any type of mold exposure can completely debilitate their ability to function. In addition, any excess mold in the air can also eliminate their ability to function. I have two incredible episodes about mold and what it takes to mold remediate and really get mold out of your environment. Back in season four, they were released in August of 2021. I guess that's season three, because this is season four. So back in season three, I had a mold expert come in who is an oral surgeon, Dr. Dennis. He removes mold from the sinuses. And then one of his patients gave us her story about how she was a very, very successful, had a very successful career, and then became bedridden only to discover that there was mold underneath the floor in the house of where she was sleeping underneath the bed. So here she is bedridden when the source of the culprit for her health concerns are right underneath her bed. Two incredible episodes on mold, go check those out. But I want you to know that we breathe over 3000 gallons of air per day. And it's a matter of is our body getting rid of those toxins or not. And then do simple things like getting airflow in your house and just paying attention to small areas or, or sources of fumes, sources of toxins, and definitely get your house checked. As far as testing for mold, I recommend the ERMI test, E-M-E-R-M-I, and I believe... It's from Myco something labs, Mycometrics. Let me pull it up really fast because I didn't think I would be talking about this, but I am. So here we are. I believe it's Mycometrics. Just do a Google search for ERMI -E tests. There we go, mycometrics.com. <clears throat> and again, the way that they are interpreted is important. Um, Dr. Dennis says he doesn't want to see anything over two on that test. However, that doesn't mean it's not within the normal range in the way that they are interpreted. So just pay attention to the water you're drinking, the air you're breathing. And if you're like me, I'm going to make moves this year. I already did. It's for my Christmas. Uh, here it is, December 14th, as I'm recording this, um, to improve the quality of the air my family breathes and the water my family drinks. I highly recommend you do the same, and you can learn more about what I'm using inside the store at drkyleburton.com slash supplements. And that's a wrap. Let's talk more with environmental toxin expert next week. Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health concerns using the labs you already have. Your doctor might tell you your blood work is normal, but I'm here to teach you a better way. If you're a doctor or a health coach and anything in between, there's one for you too. Download your cheat guides and register here at drkyleburton.com. This podcast is sponsored by Systemic Formulas and Nutribiome. Systemic Formulas, the supplement company I trust with my patients and family. Instead of ordering from a handful of companies, I use 95% SF products. They're top of the line quality with the best lab west of the Mississippi. 
They're pure, potent, and they get results. In fact, I recommend you follow their Instagram at Systemic Formulas Institute. Also, the man who's behind the Systemic Formulas products, Dr. Shane Morris, is launching a new line of supplements designed to take your microbiome to the next level. He has specific prebiotics designed to feed the probiotics. Learn more and order soon at mybiome.com. M-Y-B-Y-O-M-E dot com.